Has this ever happened to you? Going to play a word in Babel, and then suddenly you're dead? Does it feel like people are either cheating or untouchable? Hi, I'm Blastoise123, and I stream Babel Royale three times a week. I'm a top 50 player with around 19,000 MMR, and I have over 1,500 games under my belt. I'd like to share some tips and tricks for getting started in Babel Royale to hopefully make it less frustrating for newer players. In this video, I'm going to start with some of the basics of just playing words, namely where you are allowed to play and the different ways you can put tiles on the board. Let's get started. In Babel Royale, up to 16 players drop onto a map from above, just like in other Royale games. What you'll notice is that each player is a different color. Your position on the board is shown as the blue letters. You are always the blue color. Your active word is what word is shown by the blue letters. Whenever you play a new word, your old word letters become gray, still usable on the board, but not part of your active word. To play a new word, at least one letter of that new word needs to be adjacent to your active word. Well, with one exception, but I'll get there in a second. A few things to remember. One, every letter you touch while playing a new word needs to be part of an acceptable babel word. Two, you do not have to alternate between vertical and horizontal plays. You can play parallel, but again, all words created do need to be valid words. Three, you can also play through your word. Your current active word does not need to be an endpoint of your new word. These may seem obvious to say aloud, but they are quite easily forgettable if you have not played a lot of word games or Scrabble. Previously, I said that there was one exception to requiring an adjacent tile to your active word when forming a new word. Let's get to that exception now. The only time you can play a word without an adjacent tile is if the new word formed includes part of your active word. For example, adding an S or an ED to some words at the end of the word is a valid play. Knowing how to go through your word like this can be very useful to move around the board quickly by extending your previous word with an S or ED or other suffix and then jumping out into a new word on the other side of that word. The last thing to remember is that if your active word touches any other player's active word, they die. You do not have to play directly into their word, but as long as you are touching it, it is lethal. Now that we've discussed where you can play letters, let's talk about how you can get them there. There are four main ways to play tiles. They are click and drag, point and type, click and type, and lastly, keyboard only input. I'm going to go over what I believe the pros and cons are for each input method. First up is click and drag. This is the method almost every new player starts off with. It's very intuitive and easy to understand. However, this is by far the slowest way to put tiles onto the board. It is very likely that you will get killed by a faster player while you are trying to play your words in this method. As such, I strongly recommend trying out a new input method other than this to improve your gameplay. Next up was my first foray into typing. This is the point and type method. When I first heard you could type, my first instinct was to mouse over a square and type the letter. 
it was noticeably faster than dragging tiles onto the field, and relatively simple to pick up. However, the cons are it is a very weird feeling to type on a keyboard with one hand and not comfortable at all. I kept having to look down to make sure I was hitting the right key, and it definitely was slower than my normal typing speed. While I have had success with this method, I cannot recommend it as it does not compare to the speeds of the final two methods. Method 3 is click and type. This is the first regular typing method. You may have noticed while mousing around that if you left click, the highlighted green box will stay where you clicked and there are arrows within that box. Typing letters after you click will place them one at a time in the direction that the arrows are pointing. Once you get the hang of typing, this becomes a very fast method to play letters. The cons I have for this method are that if you are prone to misclicks, like I am, you may end up somewhere unintentionally, not where you want to be. Or you could leave a random letter somewhere, which will cause a failure to submit your word. It also involves taking your hand off the keyboard repeatedly, which can be deadly if used at the wrong time. I have seen top players have great success with this method, and as such, I can recommend this method, especially if you are comfortable typing with one hand on the mouse and one hand on the keyboard. The final method is keyboard-only input. If you go into your settings in Babel, there is a keyboard-only input toggle. When it's enabled, this allows you to use the arrow keys to move your green box, and the shift key to switch directions. This is the method I use, as the arrow keys feel much more familiar to me than the mouse, and I can move around very quickly to play what I want to, where I want to. However, it is not a faultless method. If my cursor is stranded after my play gets interrupted, I cannot arrow key back to my word in time to save myself. Additionally, the arrow keys may be too sensitive, and you can end up overshooting where you want to go. There is a setting toggle for slow arrow mode to counteract this, but I choose not to use it because it's too slow for my personal taste. Overall, I can recommend this the most based on my experience. I hope you found this video helpful. We discussed where and how you can play tiles in Babel Royale. We briefly touched on how kills work and pros and cons were given for each method of inputting tiles. If this video helped you, or if you like what you see, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what kind of video you would like to see in the future.